welcome back. This is video two of your chapter eight AP statistics lesson. Let's talk more about linear regression. Okay, reporting R squared. Along with the slope and intercept for a regression, you should always report R squared so that the readers can judge for themselves how successful the regression is at fitting the data. Statistics is about variation, and R squared measures the success of the regression model in terms of the fraction of the variation of Y accounted for by the regression. Assumptions and conditions, just to go back over on the quantitative variable condition, Regression can only be done on two quantitative variables and not two categorical variables, so make sh sure to check this condition. Straight enough condition, the linear model assumes that the relationship between the variables is linear. A scatter plot will let you check that the assumption is reasonable. Now, one thing I do want to point out, the scatter plot of the data should look like a line. The scatter plot of the residuals should look like a cloud. Sometimes students have a hard time and they misinterpret either a scatter plot of the data, thinking that it should look like a cloud, no, it should look like a line, or you know, at least show a consistent increase or consistent decrease. And the scatter plot of the residuals or residual plot should be the one that's just like a random cloud of, of points. If the scatter plot is not straight enough, stop here. You can't use a linear model for any two variables, even if they are related. They must have a linear association or the model won't mean a thing. Some nonlinear relationships can be saved by re-expressing the data to make the scatter plot more linear, and we will talk about that later. It's a good idea to check linearity again after computing the, uh, re the regression when we can examine the residuals. Does the plot thicken condition? Look at the residual plot. For the standard deviation of the residuals to summarize the scatter, the residuals should share the same spread. Check for changing spread in the residual scatter plot. Outlier condition, watch out for outliers. Outlying points can dramatically change the regression model. Outliers can even change the sign of the slope, misleading us about the underlying relationship between the variables. If the data seem to clump together or cluster in the scatter plot, that could be a sign of trouble worth looking into further as well. Reality check, is the regression reasonable? Statistics don't come out of nowhere. They are based on data. The results of a statistical analysis should reinforce your common sense, not fly in its face. If the results are surprising, then either you've learned something new about the world or your analysis is wrong. When you perform a regression, think about the coefficients and ask yourself whether they make sense. So what can go wrong? Don't fit a straight line to a nonlinear relationship. Beware extraordinary points, y values that stand off from the linear pattern, or extreme x values. Don't extrapolate belong, uh, beyond the data. The linear model may no longer hold outside the range of the data. So don't think the trend necessarily continues, especially if your horizontal value is time. Don't infer that x causes y just because there is a good linear model for the relationship. Association is not causation. Correlation is not causation. Don't choose a model based on R squared alone. Okay, so we're going to look at the roller coaster problem. People who responded to a July 2004 Discovery Channel poll named the 10 best roller coasters in the United States. A table in the last chapter's exercises shows the length of the initial drop in feet and the duration of the ride in seconds. A regression to predict duration for drop has R squared equals 12.4%. What are the variables and units of this regression? What units does the slope have? Do you think that the slope is positive or negative? Explain. Okay, for the variables, x is going to equal the initial drop in feet, and y is going to be the duration in seconds. Okay, um, what points does the slope have? Well, it's the units of the y over the units of x, so seconds per foot. And in case you're wondering, well, how did you know that X would be the initial drop and Y be, would be the duration? Well, the initial drop exists first, and then the duration exists at, comes into play once a roller coaster actually goes along that track. So X is more reasonable as the initial drop because that makes more sense as the explanatory um, variable. It de you wouldn't, if you applied the brakes more on the the um, the ride, 
and increase the duration. It's not like suddenly you change, you can manipulate then and cause a difference in response for the initial drop. So that wouldn't even make sense. So it makes more sense that the initial drop is the explanatory variable and why is the response variable. Now, no matter how strong association we, we come up with, we can't say that X causes Y, but you do want to you do want to put some thought into what you call X and what you call Y. Do you think the slope is positive or negative? Explain. Positive. Bigger coasters with bigger initial drops probably provide longer rides. That makes sense. Write a sentence in context, of course, summarizing what R squared says about the regression line in the roller coaster problem. About 12.4% of the variation in duration of roller coaster rides is explained by its linear relationship with the size of the initial drop. Okay, so let's look at that. So about R squared percent of the variation in the duration of the Y values is explained by its linear relationship with the X values. And that is kind of your template for explaining R squared. Continuing with the roller coaster problem, respond to the following. What is the correlation between drop and duration? Explain why you chose to make the correlation positive or negative. B, what would you predict about the duration of the, drop, of the ride on a coaster whose initial drop was one standard deviation below the mean drop? And what would you predict about the duration of the ride on a coaster, oops, sorry about the bell there, whose initial drop was three standard deviations above the mean drop? Oops. Good morning. I'm going to pause right now. About that, the little announcement action going on there. All right, let's go back to our discussion. Okay, so what is the correlation between drop and duration? Explain why you chose to make the correlation positive or negative. Well, it's going to be 0 0.352, and you get that by taking the positive square root of 0.124. The correlation is positive because it makes sense that the longer in it, the initial drop, the longer the ride. The association is positive, therefore the value of the correlation would be positive. If you had a negative association, then you just take the square root of 0.124 and then pop a negative in front of it. All right, so duration should be about one R standard deviation, since that is the Y value for the x value of drop and whenever there is one standard deviation change in the x value there is one r standard deviations change in the y value so you would do one times 0.352 standard deviations so we would expect the the duration to be 0.352 standard deviations below the mean duration the mean of the y value all right, so on the next one, it's going to be the same question, but instead three standard deviations. So if we have three standard deviations change in our x value, um, then we expect to have three times r standard deviations change in our y value. This time it's above, so the duration will also be above its mean. So duration should be about three times r standard deviations, so three times... 0.352 standard deviations or 1.056 standard deviations above the mean duration. And that's that whole regression to the mean idea. For every one standard deviation of change in your x value, you expect one R standard deviations of change with respect to your y value. All right, continuing on with the roller coaster problem, the regression analysis gives the model y hat equals 91.033 plus. 0.242x, where x equals drop and y equals duration. Explain what the slope of the line says about how long a roller coaster ride may last and the height of the coaster. So we're going to interpret the slope. There is an increase, because it's a positive slope, of 0.242 seconds of duration, so our y value in roller coaster ride, for every one foot, so one unit increase in initial drop, our x value on average. And the on average is important because um, we're not saying that it is a hard and fast rule for observations, but for our model, this is what we see happening. So it is what happens on average. So there is always there is an either increase or decrease 
when you have a positive slope it's increase, negative slope you'd have decrease, and then whatever that slope is, so in this case 0.242 units of y for every one unit increase in your x value on average. A new roller coaster advertises an initial drop of 200 feet. How long would you predict the ride lasts? So you need to plug in 200 for x. So your predicted y value, your y hat would be 91.033 plus 0.242 with that particular x value plugged in. So with 200 plugged in, and if you evaluate that, you get 139.433. So about 139 seconds. Another, roll, another coaster with a 150 initial drop advertises a two minute ride. Is this longer or shorter than you'd expect? By how much and what's this called? So they say it's gonna be a two minute ride. Let's see how much we would predict that ride to last. Um, okay, so we're gonna plug in 150 for X again into our model. And so we get Y hat equals 127.5. 333. Three, three. So our the difference between what we would predict and what actually occurred would actually be an observation minus the prediction. So the 120 minus the 127.333. And so it's negative 7.333. So we would actually um, overestimate how long we we think the ride would last. We would think it lasted two minutes and seven seconds because 120 seconds is equal to two minutes. But um, the advertisement just says two minutes. So that's the residual. Now the reason the advertisement may just say two minutes is because a brevity in two minutes and seven seconds uh, <clears throat> may seem clumsy as far as marketing goes. And uh, Now they might want to change, you know, and it just may be that it really is exactly a two-minute ride. And, you know, there's just a little residual error between what actually happens and what we would predict with our model. Okay, recall the drug abuse example from last chapter. Hopefully you saved your document and you still have it. A survey was conducted in the United States and 10 countries of Western Europe to determine the percentage of teenagers who had used marijuana and other drugs. The results are summarized in the table provided. And we're going to write the equation of, of the line of regression. Or the, you could write the least squares regression line, the linear model, and the regression model, the LSRL. All of those mean the same thing. Okay. Um, create the named list in your cast, just like you did in Chapter 7. Review the instructions in the Chapter 7 video if needed. Or if you saved your document you, and you remember what you saved it as, you can look it up. Um, choose Menu, Statistics, Statistics Calculations, Number 4, Linear Regression, A plus BX. Now, remember we use, in, when we write things down on paper, that A is our B0 and B is our B1. Okay, A is the the intercept, and um, B is the slope. Now, indicate which list is the X list, and, and I had called it MJ for marijuana, and which list is the Y list, and I called it other, so how, however you named them, that's fine. Press OK. Find A for B0, the Y intercept, and B for B1, the slope. Okay and then write the equation. All right, so just like with the one variable statistics and just like you did when you were pulling up the linear regression model to find R, here you can actually find the intercept and the slope. So Y hat equals negative 3.0678 plus 0 0.6150X. So if you need to round round to four decimal places just to get enough accuracy. All right, that's it, guys. Um, I hope you've taken really good notes. Um, come in ready to go because we'll have uh, some rounds to work next time you come to class. I will see you all then. Goodbye.